Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another program here at the library. This year is the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which is the women's right to vote. All year long, we've been holding a variety of programs that focus on women throughout our history. Earlier in the year, we had a live storytelling event with Ida B. Wells. We looked at several different artists like Amina Robinson. And this time we're gonna be talking about Frida Kahlo. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Frida Kahlo and then Miss Judy's going to do a craft with you. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican artist who was most remembered for her self-portraits. Um, they were vibrant and bold and oftentimes a little bit strange. She's celebrated throughout Mexico and the art community for her attention, not only to her Mexican culture and other indigenous cultures, but also for her depiction of the female experience and form. Frida Kahlo suffered from polio as a child. Um, in fact, she also was in a car accident and nearly died as a teenager. So her life had some physical pains as well as some emotional pains. Um, it is believed that she suffered from some depression and some other mental health issues in her life. Um, in her life experience, in her life experience, she made approximately 200 painting sketches and drawings. Um, a lot of them depicted her physical and emotional pain from her car accident um, to polio to even emotional pain with her turbulent relationship with Diego Rivera, who was also an artist who she married twice. <laughs> Apparently she didn't quite learn the first time and went back again. Um, a lot of her self-portraits are really recognizable for the eyebrows and in your craft tonight, you guys are going to depict those eyebrows on your pots. <laughs> Um, but she also was known for a lot of her self-portraits, including her pet monkey in it. Um, I don't know if I can find one really quick in here, but here's one of the most recognizable self-portraits of her. Um, Frida Kahlo is the subject, was the subject and still is even now of a lot of controversy. Um, she was a feminist. She was thought to be bisexual. Um, she was a revolutionary um, and she wore her life not only in her paintings but on her sleeve she wasn't um, afraid to be who she was or to express who she was um, she suffered from about 30 operations in her life due to the uh, bus accident I mentioned as well as the polio that she suffered it gave her a bit of a limp um, from having polio And her paintings now are in a lot of museums. They sell for quite a, a hard, large price. One of her self-portraits in 2006 sold for $5.62 million at auction. Um, she set the record as the most expensive Latin American work ever sold at auction, um, which makes her one of the highest selling women in art. Um, she was quite popular during her life. Um, um, Frida Kahlo was born in 1907. She died at 47. She did achieve cele celebrity in her brief lifetime that extended beyond Mexico's borders. Um, nothing like the cult status that would eventually come to exist after her death. Um, but she was well known for the work that she did across the world. Um, she spent most of her life in Mexico City. She died there and lived the majority of her life there. Um, the building in which she grew up in is named the Blue House. It's uh, still standing and still available um, as a museum for tours. It's one of the most popular visited places in Mexico City by tourists and by those living there. Um, the Frida Kahlo Museum contains a large portion of her works um, on exhibit, although you can find her works in other museums in the United States, as well as lots of books about her. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Frida Kahlo, you can check out the books on her at the library. You can also visit FridaKahlo.org um, and take virtual tours of the Frida Kahlo Museum and look at other works, as well as Diego Rivera's works, who was her husband and an artist himself. Have fun making your craft! Before we start our craft today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. And I want to focus in on her appearance because we're going to make a little pot here that kind of looks like Frida. So this book is called 
Frida Kahlo making herself up. So I'm going to focus in on her hair, her clothes, and her jewelry and show you some pictures from the book. And as you can see at the front of the book, she has flowers in her hair and some really fancy jewelry there. That was one of her trademarks. Here she is again. She liked to wear traditional Mexican costumes and sometimes designed her own clothes. And you can see in this picture, she liked to wear the flowers in her hair and the jewelry and the costume. And I'm sure you also noticed that she liked, had a very heavy eyebrow that kind of met in the middle and that's one of her trademarks. When she was younger, she had polio and she was also in a very bad accident. So she used the jewelry and the clothing and the flowers in her hair to draw attention away from her, her one leg being longer than the other and some of her other disabilities. Here are some of her traditional Mexican costumes that she liked to wear. The long skirts covered up the fact that one leg was longer than the other one. She did a lot of self-portraits and I think these two are particularly interesting. As you again, you can see her eyebrow, and she has a little bit of a mustache in this one. And over here, she made her eyebrow into a bird in this drawing. Here's a quote from Frida. She said of her appearance, Of my face, I like the eyebrows and the eyes. Aside from that, I like nothing. I have the mustache, and in general, the face of the opposite sex. So what we're going to do is focus on our little pot here with the flowers in the hair that she was traditionally known for, the eyebrow that meets in the middle. And so we're going to start with, this is a plastic pot, but you could also use a clay pot. Some black paint for her hair, red paint for her lips. We'll need some glue, some felt for the flowers in her hair, and some sequins for the center of the flowers. So I'm going to start out with and with our written instructions, you'll get a pattern. So I'm going to help you out a little bit with the face here. So I'm going to just stick this, kind of center it on my pot. I've got some double-sided tape on the back, but you could just hold it in place. And I'm going to take a marker. I'm just going to trace the outline of the face. So that's where I'm going to know where I'm going to paint the hair. So I'm just going to trace an outline there. You could just eyeball it if you wanted to. This makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to take my black craft paint and I'm just going to paint everything but that area I just traced. So I'm going to paint all around the pot and around the rim with my black paint. I'm just going to start out by going around my line I marked here. Like I said, you could use a clay pot or this. I wanted to use the terracotta color though. I'm going to go around the other side. So I'm leaving her face the terracotta color. And I'm going to paint the rim. So I'm going to paint this all, all the way around the pot. And then when we come back, we'll do the face. Okay, so now I've got the hair dry, and this section is going to be her face. Now, you can use the pattern and just kind of eyeball it, or you can fold it in half and hold it up here, and just kind of use that as the placement for your, your features. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a small brush, and I'm going to make some eyebrows. Remember, you want thick eyebrows that kind of meet in the center. Those were, were her features. And I'm going to make one eye right underneath that. My pot had a little bit of a pattern to it. So it makes it a little tougher. If you had a black Sharpie marker, you could very easily do this with a, a permanent marker. Okay, now that I've got one eye, that kind of gives me a basis to go off. You want to make sure your face is centered with the part of the hair there. So you want to make it centered with the part of your hair. So now I'm going to go and do the other eyebrow. See if I can do it this direction. And the good thing about the paint is if you don't like what you did, take a wet paper towel and wipe it off. 
So we've got two eyebrows there. And I'm gonna put another eye underneath there. Some eyelashes. Just a little curved line for the nose. Now, I want to make sure her eyebrows are authentic, so I'm going to put a couple little hairs there so she has her unibrow. And then I'm going to center the, just a little mouth right underneath the nose. So that's all there is to the face. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the lips with a little bit of red. I would probably want to let that dry a little bit, but it won't hurt. So that's all the painting we need to do. So our next step is going to be the flowers. So you'll also have a pattern with your written instructions for a flower. So I'm going to have three different colors of felt. For this one, I use red, yellow, and blue. I'm going to take the pattern and trace it on my felt with a pen. Now, one thing when you're cutting out a pattern that you've traced, be sure you cut off the ink line. You want to cut inside that ink line. Kind of ruins the whole thing if I can still see the ink line when I've glued my flowers onto my pot. So I would go ahead and cut one of each color out with some sharp scissors. Then I have three sequins I went ahead and glued on mine. You could use buttons or beads or anything you want to use for the center of your flower. And then I would go ahead, I would probably glue the two outside on first, just on the rim of the pot. I don't want to do that right now because I want my paint to be dry before I start that. So I'd probably glue two like that. And I would take the center one and glue it up just a little bit higher. Gives it a little dimension then. And you have Frida Kahlo. It'd be really cute to have a succulent in this pot or even one of those fake succulents that look real. So there you go. Hope you enjoy the Frida Kahlo pot. See you next time.